Get your Fitbits on, boys. On today's show, we wrestle the story behind some of Minnesota's biggest fakes, a business dreamed up by this character. I have to give my guys a break. Meet a Minnesota artist who works by his own high-tech medium. And we help you get started in an old Norwegian form of snowy transportation. Minnesota Bound. Presented by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems. Hi everybody, Bill and I welcome you to the show. Up first, we are headed to St. Paul to discover a curious little business that hides in an old and iconic St. Paul building. Duff Thurry's brainstorm turned into a Minnesota musky movement. If you ever visit this historic St. Paul warehouse, be ready for a workout. I have to have 7,500 steps a day. I get like 12,000. Duff Thurry leads all exercise. Get your Fitbits on, boys. Duff is a floor stomping, wood buzzing, blast of caffeine. What does a Lucha Libre Mexican wrestler have to do with musky fishing? Oh, everything. Just look around, and then listen. I make a lip lock. Well, we have a mat lock. I made a pile driver when I first started. We have the head locks, which are a little thinner bait. Those are all wrestling holes, so they go with the theme of the business. The work aprons might say it all. Used to push pencils. Now I push baits. Oh, I love it. Absolutely love it. Mark Westlin helps Duff grind away days building big musky baits. The only thing better than fishing with musky baits is making musky baits. Women like shiny things. Men like shiny things. Fish like shiny things. Colorful, handcrafted lures with reputation. I think there was four state records caught on my baits last year. Maybe that's why the crew can't keep up with the orders. Life's good. Life's real good. Supernatural's story starts with a dog named Ling Ling. My dog would walk, you know, back and forth across the sidewalk, smelling this and sniffing that. It'd be great to make a bait that did that. Duff's answer looked like this. He cut away from a career building furniture to tackle fishing. The furniture making skills and design skills translated baits. Scott McGlasson shares shop space with Duff. Back in the day, they built furniture. I love the colors. I love the glitter. Some of them have maybe an outsider art quality to them. They're great. It's the lure of this work in this building. A century-old cannery now full of new life and new workshops. We're makers. We're shop rats. We love being in here. A co-op of sorts that comes with perks. By law, I have to give my guys a break, okay? So Duff walks, well, almost half runs downstairs. Here's the dark, okay. That's okay. For coffee break. It's good to have neighbors like this. Why would I have a cure when you have top-notch coffee place like this here? This is what I do. Okay. It's great to get into work and it's great being here and I miss it when I'm not here. I guess that's a good job. <laughs> <laughs> Duff's work always seems to attract a crowd. You like that one? This is a carbon fiber that I put on it. He talks fishing, he sells fishing, and he lives it too. We started your bait today too. <laughs> when he's not making baits. We really want to make a fishing lure that works, but we also want to make one that's special to the guy who buys them. And then we get pictures of people that are catching, you know, monster fish, fish of a lifetime. 
and the stories we hear, it's just really rewarding. Stories of the big ones that do not get away. Musky fishing's new reality created by the supernatural. I like to catch them on my baits, and, and I love it when other people catch them on my baits. It works for me, and I want to share that with everybody. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Connecticut Water Treatment Systems, Rapala, Midwest Exteriors MN, and by Ice Castle Fish House and RV. Outdoor artists so often deal in paint and canvas or even carving blocks of wood. But artist Chris Spa might be on to a new medium. Photojournalist Kyle Heidenwright documents this mixed media story. The cool thing about art is that there's so many different types of it. It's a wide variety and it's cool to see what people kind of put their definition on it. So today at Bauhaus is a holiday market for Small Business Saturday. Bauhaus has a bunch of local artists come here and sell their various crafts and goods. They got jewelry, they got prints, they got paintings. My type of art that I've always liked to express has been in painting. Outdoors has always been just kind of like a, a part of my life. I've always loved hiking. I've always loved just being outside and being away from everything. And it really doesn't feel like we're in Minneapolis right now. Tina, come on. So I never had a dog, and it's been a blast. <laughs> She's got eyes that pierce like daggers. She just loves going and venturing around and checking out new things as much as I do. All the ducks and geese hanging out on the ice. <laughs> Canon EOS 70D, way too big, but it's fun to play with. It's time to get to hang out with the ducks. We can be right next to them. I don't really like put my photos anywhere. I just use them for inspiration. Once I started doing photography, I was like, this is awesome. I want to paint this. That's kind of my way of getting people to see my photography is through my paintings, which is kind of odd. I always like to start by just doing a light sketch. The unpredictable nature of watercolors was just so intriguing to me. So it requires a little more planning, placing water strategically. You're kind of committed once you, once you start, and then once you start, you're kind of just going. And then on the flip side, doing it in digital. I kind of wanted to create that watercolor look, but to be able to manipulate it digitally. So it's just kind of fun to relearn something that I already knew and then just kind of finding new ways to apply that. There's a time-lapse replay. It's always capturing the what you're doing on the canvas. You can watch me do my art. The possibilities are basically infinite. There's all the layers, eraser, here's the paintbrush, there's all different types of paintbrushes. It's, there's too many options, and it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Since I've been working digitally, my, my style has changed. The beauty of working digitally is the fact that you can get right within an image itself and get real fine with your details. 
and if I don't like where it's going, I can just delete the layer, <laughs> which is really convenient. cool to see someone make a connection with your piece that's completely different than why you made it. And seeing their expression and seeing how excited they get when I make those pieces and when I give it to them, is, it's been so much fun that I'm trying to figure out how I can do more of that. Still ahead, we help you get started with an old Norwegian form of travel. And later, a Minnesota museum takes you to the moon. Closed captioning provided by Star Bank. Skijoring is derived from a Norwegian word that translates to ski driving, using animals and skis as a means of transportation. And it's no surprise, based on our Scandinavian heritage here in Minnesota, it's become a very popular sport. But how do you get started? Well, I'm here to take a lesson from a national champion, and I even brought my own sled dog. Ready, Bacon? All right, Tyler, so how do I get involved in this Scandinavian sport? It looks like it's so much fun. It is. Uh, the first thing that you're going to need is a dog because we're skijoring today, which is being pulled on your cross-country skis by a dog. Where do you want to skijor? Because I'm assuming you want some groomed trails if you're going to have success, right? That's right. Uh, you definitely want to have a groomed trail but you can't go on every groomed trail. Uh, Three Rivers Park District has a handful of trails. If you want to call ahead, make sure that it's okay that you have a dog on the trail. Do you need a license requirement for your dog? You should, depending on what city you are in. So what do I need, what equipment do I need? You know, pretty much whatever a skier would need to go out and ski on their own, that's what you're gonna need on you. And then uh, the apparatus to connect the dog to the skier. Okay. okay. So we've got harnesses that we'll put on. The padded belt uh, is gonna go around your waist and then you can step into the other loops and then it just clips up front. We'll have a bungee that goes between us and the dog. Stretch material in a harness and in the bungee so that if there's a little bit of slack in the line and the dog takes off, he doesn't get hurt. That makes sense. I also see you have a harness for the dog. You're not using a dog collar, which I'd imagine would be very important. That's right. Uh, having a specialty made pulling harness is important so that your dog doesn't get hurt. So just as it's important that you have the right equipment, the dog also needs the right equipment. I'd say it's even more important that the dog has the right equipment. I agree. You want to keep your dog safe. That's right. Okay, well I have my boots, which I rented from Three Rivers Park District, Baker Park Reserve, and I'm going to put these on and I think we're ready to go. Awesome. Should I grab my sled dog, Bacon? Yes. We'll start there? Yes. Okay. <laughs> If you've got a treat in your pocket <laughs> and your dog is treat driven, maybe you, you can get him to do go. a little, come on, let's go. A little pull in oh, action yeah, like that. Oh yeah, there we go. Good job, Bacon. Come on. Good, good boy. Well, I don't think Bacon has enough horsepower. I mean, <coughs> dog power. So we're going to turn it up a notch. Who is our <coughs> national champion we have with us? This is my dog, Buddy. Buddy, he's ready to go. <coughs> he is. He will do this until we hit the trail. <laughs> I, think, I think he's going to be a little faster than Bacon. He's ready to go. <laughs> Since you're new to the sport, we've got a tether on you and a tether on me, and obviously Buddy's ready to go. So before you start off on skis, I'd say go out on your daily walks teaching the commands to go, to slow down, to stop. To buddy, you ready? I think he's ready. He's telling us, let's okay. go. Ready, buddy? Okay, let's Here go. go. Up, 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 up. Good 
a boy. Easy, whoa. So as you can see, ski joring is a wonderful way to keep you and your dog active in the winter months. But most importantly, just get outdoors. Let's go, buddy. Good boy. Minnesota Bound is brought to you by Hewitt Docks, Lifts, and Pontoon Legs. Leech Lake Area Tourism. And by Totem Resorts, the premier destination for world-class fishing. Have you ever wanted to travel to space? Recently, visitors at the Bell Museum in St. Paul got so close to the moon, it felt like they could almost touch it. 238,900. That's how many miles the moon is from the Earth. But the visitors to the Bell Museum in St. Paul need only pay a few dollars to travel to the moon. And what's really great about the moon is that we all see it. See it? You can't miss a 21 meter moon in the main lobby. These are real images of the moon that are stitched together. Even those driving down Larpenter and Cleveland Avenue got a few. The Museum of the Moon exhibit recently passed through the U of M Natural History Museum, allowing visitors an up-close look at the fifth largest satellite in our solar system. So tonight's event is called After Hours Night Moves. The moon was part of the Bell Museum's year of the Apollo celebration, marking the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11 landing on the moon. Our building is really a reflection of Minnesota inside and out. There's been a lot to celebrate at the museum as they recently moved into their new $79 million home. Well, one thing that you'll see when you come into the new museum um, is how much natural light there is. We also added another really big feature, which is our woolly mammoth diorama. It's our first new diorama in over 50 years. We have over a million specimens from both uh, Minnesota and the region. And, uh, Visitors on this night were treated to a special guest from Voyager's Wolf Project. It's a real honor to be part of After Hours and Night Moves. Joseph Bump spoke about the secret lives of wolves in the summer. Yeah, the Voyager's Wolf Project is a collaboration between the University of Minnesota and Voyager's National Park. Their goal? We're focused on what they're doing approximately from April to October, how they're raising their pups, how they're making a living when it comes to prey, um, and sharing that with people. Because so we're using technology like GPS collars, technology like remote cameras, and combining them um, to bring pictures and video and the science uh, to people. Night vision cameras caught the wolves fishing. Yes, wolves fish. Wolves in the past have exhibited certain uh, fishing behaviors, if you will, hunting these white suckers. Bump says wolves are known to fish for salmon, but not necessarily freshwater fish. It's known that fish were in their diets, but capturing that on video um, was really interesting. The night videos range from fishing to taking care of pups. You cannot walk in this museum and not be impressed with that exhibit. It is super cool. All these videos took place under a night sky. The moon watching from far above. Hmm. All part of the museum's big renovation. Yeah, very fun place to visit. Well, that about does it for us this week. We will see you back here next week. And in the meantime, don't forget to introduce a kid to the great outdoors. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433.